Okay, hello again, hello again. Uh, welcome to the third part of our session here on emails. Um, today we're going to talk about how to respond to an email. We'll go through a couple of example emails, and then I'll have a little bit of homework for you at the end. Uh, and I'll put mo one more video up after this, uh, just showing the answers to that homework. Anyhow, let's get going here. Last time we looked at writing an email, and we tried to correct an email as well. I just want to review briefly uh, some of the things that we talked about. Um, first things first, make sure you identify the purpose in the email. Make it a catchy and pertinent title. That's the big thing. That goes in your subject line. We always start with some sort of a greeting. Hi, hello there, whatever it might be. We try to uh, inject a positive note or at least personalize. We need to, at the very minimum, have some sort of common ground here, some sort of shared understanding, just kind of expressing the fact that, yes, um, I'm treating you as a person. We're both part of the same thing here. Uh, and ideally, it should be related to the content that we're looking at right there. It shouldn't be completely off base. Uh, we don't want to have something completely unrelated. So if I'm writing to someone about, uh, let's say, a medical issue, or maybe I want some time off, uh, I don't want to start by saying, hi, wow, there was an earthquake yesterday. Anyway, I'd like some sick leave. So we have to make sure it is related. The other thing, get to the point quickly. And I'll say one other thing here, um, which hopefully goes without saying, but let's make sure. And it's this, stay on point. Um, that goes along with this word right here, related. Um, we want to get to the point quickly in an email, and we want to stay on point. We don't have a lot of time to talk about other things. Um, sometimes it might seem funny, but that's if you're just writing something to a friend, not in any kind of formal email. And speaking of which, we want to keep it formal and polite. And again, just remember, anyone could read this. It could end up in a courtroom, so be very careful. Make sure you keep it formal and polite. We end by saying thanks, bye-bye, and try to make sure your contact information is in there. Again, if you work for a big company, it's probably taken care of for you. If not, just make sure that at least your phone number and email address are available. And finally, remember TLDR, too long, didn't read. Make sure it's not going to be too terribly long, because otherwise people are not going to read it. With that said, we're going to get going here, uh, and all of the text that you're going to see is in the description section of uh, this video, so go ahead and take a look. The first thing that we're going to look at here is actually not a problem. This is just an example of an email from some guy named Barry, evidently, um, asking about a particular issue. So I'd ask you to please... Whoa, and I can't type again. This is a well-established fact. Um, I'd ask you to please pause the video as you read through this text. Pause and please read through exactly what we have here. Uh, and once you've done that, we'll move on to looking at the next part. So go ahead and read this. Go ahead and start now. Okay, hopefully you're done reading that. So, unpause. Um, what we have here is just a basic email. Uh, from this guy, Barry, and he's asking about some issue with uh, medical work that he wants to get done in March, and whether or not his uh, company is going to be able to pay for it. It sounds to me like, there it is, he wants to get some dental work done, um, but he doesn't know if he's still receiving medical pay then. Okay, so this is just a fairly standard email you might get in an office. I've had us read this just so that we understand it. This guy, Barry, is writing to Mr. Jones. His subject, medical pay, could be a better subject. Uh, we could add medical pay for March. Um, that makes it a little bit clearer so that we know what's going on there. We know that it's a question. We know it's about medical pay, and we know it's for March. Whatever, though. So we see, yes, uh, I want to go get some dental work done in March. Am I still going to be getting medical pay then? Uh, what's going on with that? Uh... Will it include medical work that I have done in March? I'll see if I can work this out, blah, blah, blah. We can see it's grouped together by similar ideas. We have here, just like we talked about before, I hope that all is well in the office. Sorry to bug you with the small question. Okay, here's our 
note of uh, starting off some with something positive, uh, trying to establish common ground, too. And we're also starting off with some background information, saying, I'm planning on doing some medical stuff in March, but I'm wondering about my medical pay. And then we get our question. So this is good. We've got background, and then we've got all this right here. So this is a pretty standard email. It's fine. Let's go down to the response now. Here's the response. Same deal. Please take a peek at this. Again, <laughs> we ended up with uh, Puaz and now Pasu. Okay, <laughs> let's try pause this time. Here we go. Please go ahead and pause the video as you read through this response. Go ahead and pause right now. Okay, hopefully you're done reading that. And you can see... <laughs> This doesn't exactly look amazing from the very get-go. Now, we mentioned last time as well, we don't like to see individual lines like this. We like to see common ideas grouped together into paragraphs, just like we see in this email right here. Um, so that's the first thing that strikes us as a little bit odd. And the other thing is, it just... It doesn't flow very well here. We don't know what exactly is going on. It's not entirely clear, uh, clear what this it would be. Uh, it's I don't know why this information is here. Um, I don't know why we hear this, I'll send you a payroll. I don't even know what this is. Um, I don't know why it's give me a couple of days, I'm short on time. There's a lot of information in this email that is unclear, and that's a problem. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at a slightly different version of this same email. So, I'm going to go down here. Here we go. Um, this is a little bit too long for me to put it all in the screen at once, so I'm just going to stop it right here. Let's take a look at this one. And same thing, let's hope I can actually type it correctly this time. Nope. Alright, go ahead and pause the video and read through this email next. Pause right now. Okay, hopefully you have taken a look at this email right here. And you can see there's some big differences between what we see here and what we see here. The first one that jumps out at, uh, that jumps out at us is what we've mentioned already. Here we have paragraphs. Here we have single lines. So that's the first thing. Just by taking a little blink, we see, whoops, this doesn't look right. Uh, this does look right. But there's a couple other things that look different, too. One of them is this. Um, and the other thing is, we have this right here, so I'm kind of glad to hear from you. And we also have this high berry right here. So, I want to go through what the differences are between this email right here, which is our bad version of it, and this email right here, which is the better version of it. So, here's our list of things that we want to include when we are responding to an email. It's very, very similar to when we're writing an email uh, from the very first time. Essentially, you can remember all those same things, except you don't have to worry about a couple of them. The first thing you don't have to worry about is your subject line. No need to worry about that because you're just responding to an email. Because of that, all we need to remember to start with is some sort of greeting. That's the positive way to do it. Hi, hello there, how are you, whatever it might be. Um, and we can see the simple one right here is, hi, Barry. Uh, again, I'm from the United States. This is typically what we would do. Uh, hi, Barry. Hi there, Barry. Those are just fine. In other countries, there might be slightly different ones, but this is what we do very frequently. If we take a look at this email right here, uh-oh, we don't have any greeting. So that right there sets a tone of making it sound very rude. We don't like that. So that's the first thing. We want to have a greeting. Second thing, positive note, personalize, echo. Again, the idea here is common ground. Um, and we have this right here, echo. Echo just means say what they said back to them. Um, so if we look right here, this is the original email. Hi there, Mr. Jones. Um, I hope that all is well at the office. If I want to echo that, 
I could take this same expression, I hope that all is well at the office, and I could say, let's see here, gosh, glad to hear from you. Mm. I hope that all is well on your end, too. So that would be echoing what the other person has said. We don't have to do that, necessarily. All we really need is some sort of positive note or common ground right here. That's the idea. So, some sort of greeting, positive note, personalized, echo, common ground, whatever it might be. Just something to show the person that, yes, hi, I have understood you, we're together, we're part of the same uh, whatever is going on here. <laughs> part of the same organization, part of the same issue, etc. We don't have that here. We have no greeting, we have no positive note, we have no echo. Oh dear, no common ground. Next up. So again, we have greeting. Great. Hi there. How you doing? Positive note. Good to hear from you. And next thing. Introduce the question or topic. Now, the way we do this is basically just uh, taking whatever the question was that the person asked and copy and pasting it straight into our email. If we don't want to do that, we can also say, you mentioned, and whatever it might be. So we start by doing that, and then we respond. It's actually very simple. Um, the easiest and safest way to do this is to copy and paste what the other person wrote in their email. So, let's take a look really quick, like here. I'm going to come up to the not-so-good email first, and we see this. It will be on the 10th of April. Do you remember what it will be? I don't. Um, I'll send you a payroll voucher, but give me a couple of days I'm short on time. I don't know why this is here. I'm unsure of what this information is about. So, that's a problem. Because that's a problem, what we like to do is this. Aha. Will my final medical pay be for March? What we see is this little arrow right here. And that's on your keyboard. Um, it's right on top of the period uh, key, which is two to the right of the M button on your keyboard. If you put that in there, it says this is a quotation from the other email. So all we have to do is come up here to the original email, and you see, ah, here it is. Will my final medical pay be for March? All I have to do is copy that, paste it down here, control V, of course, and then I just put a little uh, arrow right there, and that shows that I am copying from the original email. So, what we have here is, will my final medical pay be for March? There's the question, and now we answer the question. Okay, your final medical payment will be on April 10th, and it will be for the full month of March. Aha, and then we get, this is because your first medical payment was also in April, so to make it a blah, 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 blah. What we have here is all of the related information together in one paragraph, saying, okay, final payment will be on April 10th, it'll be for the full month of March, um, you'll be covered through the end of March. Okay, great. If we look at this email right here, it will be on the 10th of April. Fairly unclear. Um, and then we get this, because it started March, two, March 7th, 2005. Oh, goodness. Um, I could take all of this information and put it together in one paragraph. If I do that, it makes it a little bit easier to understand. If I add a couple of the other missing elements here, like a greeting, If I do that, it already looks a lot better. Hi there, Barry. It'll be on the 10th of April. This is still not great because we haven't introduced the question or anything, uh, but it still looks a lot better just by doing that. Um, so that's the next step. Have a greeting, positive note, introduce the question or topic, and we make sure we copy or, and paste that, or we say you mentioned something. Now, we've already looked at copy and pasting, and when you copy and paste, put a little arrow in there. Again, that's on the period key. Um, I want to look at the other thing you can do, too, which is this. Also, you mentioned that you were planning on getting some dental work done. So this is not exactly copy and pasting. Right here we see 
you mentioned that, uh, and then we say, oh yeah, you also said this in your email. Same thing though, what we have is, here's the question, here's the idea, and here's our answer to it right afterwards. So, in this email, we actually have two different ways of answering questions. The first, putting that arrow, here's the question. The second, you mentioned that, and then we have the other issue from the first email. Once we do that, we add our answer right afterwards. And that's basically how that part works. So, greeting, positive note, personalize, echo, above all, establish common ground. Next up, introduce whatever question or topic uh, the email is about right there. So we can copy and paste, or we can say, you mentioned, and whatever it is, then we answer. And the rest of it, exactly like what we would do in any other email. We say thanks, talk to you later, here's our contact info, blah blah blah, and remember, try not to make it too long, because people will not read that, and also, always always, make it fairly formal and polite. And that's basically that. So, once again, we have our good version of the email right here. Great, everything's fairly clear. We have paragraphs of related ideas. There we go. We have quoted text uh, to show what the question was. And right here we also have, you mentioned that, plus another statement of uh, some kind of concern here. And in each case, we have the question first, followed by the answer. The issue right here, followed by the answer. That's what we want to see. Okay, we already made a couple of changes to this email. We added a greeting. I could fix it a little bit more by saying, good to hear from you. Um, I could make this even better by simply saying, uh, let's see here, now we already said echo. Why don't we echo what we had right here. I hope that all is well in the office. I hope that all is well for you too. There we go. Now we've got an echo. Um, now, let's try to do this. We already looked at copy and pasting, so let's see if we can do that right here and make it work. Let's see here. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Copy. We'll put it right here. All I have to do is put a little arrow right here. There we go. Will my final medical pay be for March? Now, this is not sounding great yet because all we have is this. I hope all I hope that all is well for you too. Now, if I want to make a smooth transition to the next idea, all I have to do is say something like Whoa, sorry. In regards to your questions. Once I've done that, it says, aha, uh -huh, I'll take a look at your questions now. Will my final medical pay, uh, pay be for March? Blah, 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 blah. Let's see here. Mr. Adams said so. He's in charge of accounting. I don't need that. It's completely unrelated. I'll send you a payroll voucher. Uh, I don't think I really need that either. Yeah, okay, great. Have a nice weekend. Jeremy. By doing this, it already looks a little bit better. It's not great because this doesn't actually answer all the questions. This one does. But still, just looking at it with one blink, this looks better than it was before. All right. With that said, we've taken a look at a couple of uh, emails here. So here's our original one. Here's one response. Here's our other response, and this is what we're really trying to look for here. Um, remember, all the same rules apply here. We want to be formal, we want to be polite. Um, we'll come back up here to take a look at them. Uh, we want to have greetings, we want to start positive, we want common ground, we want to get to the point quickly, um, say thanks, see you later. We want to keep it pretty short. So, with all these things in mind, um, here is some homework. It's this part. Um, this is another version of a response to the same email. So I'd like you to imagine that you received this email 
to Mr. Jones, blah, 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 blah. And this is the response that you're trying to write to it. Uh-oh, it came out like this. It doesn't really look all that good. The homework is, please fix this. Turn this into a good response to the email. And that's basically that. I'll check in with you next time, uh, and we'll see how we can fix this one to make it look a little bit better. And there we go. Good luck.